Greetings friends, this is Reverend Jasper Tumhimbi Sempirirwe on Right TV, your TV that teaches God's word. I encourage you to be on our TV, also be on all our platforms. Today, I want to talk about two decisions with the two destinies. And it is like, you know, encouraging us to remember that if you are on a, a family or a if you are a father, a mother, or a child, you must make a decision that has two options. But every decision, every choice you make has two destinies. And that's what we are going to see right away. That families which have altars that are active through the word of God are families which will have a decision that is in accordance with God's word. But also a family which has no altar, which doesn't pray, which doesn't listen to the word of God, also has another destiny, which is not the destiny of God, but the destiny of the evil one. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24, as well as verse 26, we are going to see two people who made two choices and then had two destinies. The first one, is in Matthew chapter 24 and chapter 7 and verse 24. It says, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man. Is like a wise man. Verse 26, But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. And this is interesting because it is two people, two persons with two decisions that will have two destinies. And one person is called wise. And of course we are going to see what makes a person wise. Another person is called foolish. So, what does it mean to be wise or foolish? First of all, one of the things that are clear is that all these two men had they have ears they had they listened to the word today families will listen to the word of god but as we shall see later it doesn't mean that they will both implement them so they all listened and then secondly they listened to the word of god meaning you can listen to anything meaning there are so many noises around us, especially family today. The noise of children, the noise of wives, the noise of husbands, the noise of relatives and friends, the noise of luck. There are so many noises. But in this case, again at the second point, therefore whoever hears these words, we are dealing with the word of God. That yes, others can speak, but we are dealing with the noise of the word of God. That families have an opportunity to listen to the word of God. But then second, the number three, the issue of interpretation. That when you hear, you do not necessarily interpret it. It depends upon whether you are foolish or whether you are wise. And that's what separates, separates families today. What separates me and you, in most cases, is how we interpret the word of God. So Jesus is saying, and really this is a sermon on the mount, that therefore everyone who has these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man. Then in verse 26, but everyone who has these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. So there is hearing, there is hearing the word of God, but there is also interpretation. And I want to dwell really dwell there that whoever does not interpret the signs, whoever does not interpret these days, it means they are not wise. So let me ask you, are you foolish in certain things? Are you foolish in some ways? Today is the day when you need to be wise. Them says, if you lack wisdom, pray to God to give you wisdom. And we are going to see how the wise behave. But I want to say that interpreting God's word in the family context today is 
because of wisdom. In Job 28, 28, the Bible says, to know God is wisdom, to shun evil is understanding. So are you wise or you are a fool? Are you for God or you are for the devil? Is your family handed over to God or you have handed over your family to the evil one? That's what separates us. That's what makes two people to make two decisions. And I want to encourage you today, make a decision whether you will follow God. Make a decision whether you will be of God. Make a decision whether you will be able to now lead your family toward the certain end that is of God. So they heard, and they heard the word of God, but they misinterpreted. So the interpretation has two things. Number one is that you hear, but you do not care about the word. You hear, and you do not care about the word. So you misinterpret it. You become indifferent. You are like Eli in the Old Testament, who was the high priest, and the message came, First Samuel chapter 3, from verse 16. The message came that your children will be able to perish one day because they haven't honored God. You know what he did? He said, let God do what he thinks he can do, indifferent. And that's what the tragedy is for today, that families hear the word of God, and in terms of interpretation, they are indifferent. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. We even sometimes read it to those who preach. I can assure you, my friend, we are as wise as the people of ancient times who believed in the word. But if you do not listen to this word and interpret it well, and you are indifferent to this word, let me tell you, you are a fool, F-O-O-L. And it can be said, if you are a fool, then where can you obtain wisdom? Again, I have said, if you lack wisdom, pray to God to give you wisdom. But today, you can't run a family without the word, and you must interpret that word properly. But the second lay on interpretation, which is more interesting, it is putting into practice. That I'm not merely interpreting rightly, but I'm practicing the word of God. That if the word says, if two of you agree on anything on heaven, it will be done by my Father on earth. That if you ask, you will receive. That means you are putting into practice what we call interpretation. That yours is not simply to listen to the word, but yours is also to practice the word. There are so many families which don't practice the word. There are so many families which are gamblers, they are gambling. Today I want to encourage you, let your family be a family that practices the word. You have interpreted rightly, yes, but please inter interpret also and do the word. The Bible has said, therefore everyone who hears these words of man and puts them into practice. Do you put into practice what you preach? Do you put into practice if you say you are to your daughter or to your son, don't commit adultery? Do you commit it? That's what Paul is actually asking in Romans. That many of us want to be teachers, but we teach what we don't do. The Bible is saying, please practice what you preach. In fact, I normally say, say what you can do or don't say it at all. Say what you can do or don't say it at all. We are tired of families. We are tired of heads of families, men and women, who simply talk and they do not put into practice what they have talked about. And so Jesus is saying that if you are wise, you will put into practice what you have heard. So do you practice reading of the word as a family? Do you practice fellowship as a family? Do you practice prayers as a family? I want to encourage you today, be on that right, right side of the wise people who will practice what they have heard. What about the foolish man? Verse 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is a foolish man. And so, in this world, we have two categories. The foolish and the wise. We have two categories. Those who want darkness and those who want light. Those for life and those who are not for life. 
Where are you, my friend? Which section are you? How can I encourage you? And I want to end by saying that, my friend, the only difference between your family and other families is whether you put into practice the word of God. There are about 8, million, 8 billion people in the whole world. What makes the difference of billions with a few millions is those who put into practice the word of God. And so let this week be a week where we read the word of God as a family, where we will practice the presence of God as a family, where you will go into the family altar and pray, where you will cover all your children, and indeed it will go well. I will end like this, and I will end this way. Friends, if you are listening to me, I want to end this way, that today you need to choose wisdom. Today you need to be wise, because today is the day of salvation, not only for you as head of family, but for the whole family. Will you choose wisdom? Will you choose to hear the word of God and put it to practice? We are going to pray. And as we pray, please know one thing. God wants you to be on his side. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you that you are our God. We thank you that in all situations, when we practice the presence of God, we shall be wise. I pray for wisdom for fathers. I pray for wisdom for mothers. I pray for wisdom for children, that today indeed will be a day to choose to listen to your word, my Lord and my God. And I pray especially for those who have made wrong choices, that today will be a day when families will choose to follow you all the days of their lives. And so my friend, you who is listening, may God bless you, may God keep you, May God shine his face upon you. May God be gracious to you. May God make you wise so that you may be able to listen to his word. That therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man. I pray that wisdom will now flow from fathers to their children, from their children to fathers. And indeed, as a nation, as Right TV, we shall continuously preach wisdom. I thank you, Lord. I honor you, for we have prayed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please remain tuned to Right TV and also go to our platforms. God richly bless you.